Not gonna lie, most differential equations are not easy to solve. And they get hard for a variety of different reasons. Let's take a look at how things can get difficult. Consider the following really interesting differential equation involving a sine function. Consider dx dt equals minus sine of x. That seems simple enough. It's a really cool equation. It shows up in studies of coupled oscillators, where you have a collection of spinners that are linked together, and they tend to synchronize, and this has implications in things like robotics, in things like biology, really cool stuff. But let's look at it as a differential equation. This is a nice one. It's autonomous. It's separable. It's easy. All we got to do is multiply through by dt, divide through by sine of x. What do we get? On the right, we've got minus dt. On the left, dividing by sine of x, we've got cosecant of x, dx. All we have to do is integrate both sides, just like we've done before. Tell you what, you do the left side, I'll do the right, okay? Uh, I'm done. The integral of minus dt is minus t, haha, <laughs> plus a constant. Are you done? Are you done with the left-hand side? You remember the integral of cosecant of x? Ooh, yeah, that's a tough one. That one is not obvious at all. But I'll tell you what, I'm a nice guy. I'll give it to you. Here's a fact. The integral of cosecant of x is log of cosecant of x plus cotangent of x. Uh, you got to put some absolute values in there. Whatever. How'd I get that? I'll tell you later. Now that I've done that for you, you do the rest, okay? Take that solve for x of t. All you got to do is a little bit of algebra. That's not going to be so bad, right? Well, I'd exponentiate both sides, and then, okay, fine, you do the rest. Hmm. Ouch. This is not so good. I'm beginning to despair. What is the cause for that despair? Is it the integration? Is it the algebra? Could be either. Some differential equations, they're just hard. But that's a nice one. That's an autonomous, separable equation. What about non-autonomous, non-separable equations? Oof. That sounds like it could get difficult. Well, let's do a motivating example, a delicious example. Consider the following scenario. Let's say that we've got a tank, a 1,000 gallon tank that is 90% full of delicious creamy yogurt. Did I spell that right? I don't know. But what we do is we add strawberry puree to that yogurt in the tank at a rate of 10 gallons per minute. That tank, it blends it all up, makes a nice smoothie, and it dispenses that blended smoothie at a rate of five gallons per minute. Here's the problem. What is the strawberry concentration when the tank is completely full? That is, when we get to the full 1,000 gallons. To solve this, let's set up some variables. Let's begin with the volume, V of T, the volume in the tank. That is what? A uh, thousand gallon tank starts off at 90% full. That's 900. Then I'm adding stuff in at a rate of 10 gallons per minute. That means that the volume is increasing at that rate. So I have a plus 10 T term in the volume, but then I'm blending it up and draining the tank at a rate of five gallons per minute. So I have to subtract off five T. Okay, that's our expression for the volume as a function of time. What are the other relevant variables? Well, we have S of T, which is the volume of strawberry puree inside that tank. What is that? Well, it starts off at zero, and then it's coming in at a rate of 10 gallons per minute, and then, I don't know, stuff gets blended up. We'll talk about that in a minute. Our last variable, the thing that we are going to care most about, is C of T. That is the concentration of strawberry mixture in the smoothie. That's what the problem is asking for. What's a concentration? I take the amount of strawberry stuff, S of T, and I divide by the total volume, V of T. And when this problem asks for the concentration when the tank is completely full, what is that? Well, let's see, it starts off at 900 gallons. 
Uh, how much time does it take to get to 1,000? That's 20. So I'm really looking for C of 20. That's the thing I'm trying to compute. How do we do that? We know the volume. Let's write down a differential equation for S of T, the amount of strawberry stuff. And if we could solve that, we could get the concentration from there. So what is DSDT? It's the amount of stuff coming in minus the amount of stuff coming out. This is all in terms of rates, since this is DSDT. So we're adding strawberry puree at a rate of 10 gallons per minute. That means we have a contribution of 10 to DSDT. What are we taking away? Well, we're taking away stuff at a rate of 5 gallons per minute. So we've got a 5, but we're not taking out just strawberry puree. We're taking out the mixture. So what we're removing in terms of the amount of strawberry stuff is 5 times C, the concentration. That concentration is S over V. We know what V is, so we can write down DSDT as 10 minus quantity 5S divided by 900 plus 5T. Now, if we simplify that, rearrange that a little bit, I think I can divide through by 5, I'm going to get a final form for DSDT as 10 minus S over 180 plus T. That's our differential equation. Let's solve it. I don't know how to. This is not autonomous. It's got a T in there. And it's not separable. If I multiply through by dt, I can't divide by s, rearrange the terms. Uh-uh. It does not work. Well, maybe we could write down a differential equation for dc dt. Oh, no. That's going to be even worse. What are we going to do? Welp. We're going to give up. We're going to give up for now. This is an example that is meant to motivate the technique that we're going to learn next.